the rugged majesty of Colorado sets the backdrop for today's Moffat Road. Between the west bore of the Moffat Tunnel and Glenwood Springs lies 130 miles of high mountain parks and deep, colorful canyons. Seven Idea Productions visited this incredible piece of the West in the summer and fall of 2012. In part one of this series, we explored the east side between Denver and the east portal of the Moffat Tunnel. We watched hard-working trains laboring up the 2% grade through Colorado's Front Range Mountains to the Continental Divide. Now, let's continue west of the Divide. After exiting the 6.2-mile-long Moffat Tunnel, the grade lessens, allowing trains to sprint through the Colorado high country. Loaded coal trains put on a fantastic show of raw horsepower versus gravity. You'll see the California Zephyr in Byers Canyon. And a UP business special racing over the flats. The former Denver and Rio Grande Western route to Glenwood Springs is one of the most scenic railroads in the West. As trains follow the course of the Colorado River, one awe-inspiring vista opens up after another. From the bottom of Gore Canyon, to high up on the Craig Branch, to the splendor of Glenwood Canyon. The Rio Grande called this the scenic line of the world, and you'll see why in The Moffat Road, Part Two. Winter Park to Glenwood Springs. David Moffitt's route through the Colorado Rockies ran west out of Denver and over Rollins Pass, cresting the Continental Divide at over 11,660 feet above sea level. When Moffitt died in 1911, his transcontinental railroad ended in the coal fields near Steamboat Springs, far short of his goal of Salt Lake City. The Moffitt Tunnel was completed in 1927, bypassing the hazardous line over Rollins Pass, and in 1934, the Dotsero Cutoff connected the Moffat with Rio Grande's Tennessee Pass Line, creating a direct route between Denver and Salt Lake City. Today, the Moffat route is part of Union Pacific's Denver area, seeing mainly coal traffic out of western Colorado and eastern Utah. BNSF operates trains over the line via trackage rights, and Amtrak's California Zephyr runs each way daily between Chicago and the West Coast. The west bore of the 6.2-mile-long Moffat Tunnel opens into the Winter Park Ski Resort. Located on the west side of the Continental Divide at an elevation of over 9,000 feet, Winter Park is arguably the highest incorporated town in the United States, thanks to the resort. This popular ski destination was served by the Denver and Rio Grande Western Ski Train between 1940 and 2009. From the top of the tunnel, we can make out an eastbound BNSF train in the siding at Winter Park. It is waiting for Amtrak 5, which today is running about two hours late. Trackside, we catch the westbound California Zephyr as it exits the tunnel.
Within a few minutes, BNSF 4814 East is on the move as it prepares to disappear under the Continental Divide inside the Moffat Tunnel. BNSF trains have trackage rights over the Moffat Line dating back to 1997. This was the result of Union Pacific's acquisition of the Southern Pacific. A newly installed LED signal guards the west portal of the Moffat Tunnel. The new digital signals have no moving parts and are quickly replacing older signals on railroads throughout America. Classic searchlight signals still remain at the west end of Winter Park siding. Although their days are numbered, they take us back to an earlier time when the DNRGW and SP ran through here. Speaking of SP, the red nose of a former Southern Pacific AC-4400 appears through the trees as a westbound comes to a stop in the 7,110-foot siding. The train has just exited the Moffat Tunnel and will wait here for two eastbounds before continuing west. Soon the signals at control point CPDS-058 come to life with a high yellow or approach for a BNSF train as it grinds up the final leg of the 2% climb to the tunnel. The BNSF 5186 approaches, tackling the highest active mainline railroad in North America.
The BNSF 6986, a brand new ES44 C4, applies sand to the rails as it shoves on the rear of a Provo, Utah to Denver manifest. The crew of the westbound UP gives the BNSF a good roll by over the radio. And roll by Wonder Park. Roger, good roll by Wonder Park. Thank you. Safe trip, folks. Just downhill from Winter Park is a town of Frazier, which was established in 1904 in the anticipation of the coming Moffat Line. With an elevation of 8,550 feet and an annual mean temperature of 32.5, it is considered the coldest incorporated town in the lower 48 states. It is said to have the shortest growing season in the nation, averaging just four to seven days in length. Set up near the Winter Park Amtrak Depot, we catch our first coal train. Two more former Southern Pacific GEs lead the charge of the 2% grade. A trio of remote-controlled swing helpers add their muscle to the middle of the train, and a fourth brings up the rear. This is the common configuration for loaded coal trains on the Moffat.
As the train continues up grade to the Moffat Tunnel, the sun sets in the western sky, bringing another day of rail fanning to a close. On a chilly morning in October, we set up on the Amtrak platform as another eastbound BNSF manifest climbs the grade. This Provo to Denver train assembled the QPVDVJ and makes a daily appearance on the Moffat. As the train continues through Fraser, we can see a dusting of snow over the Continental Divide. Between Fraser and Tabernash, UP 6064 East lugs another loaded coal train up the hill as dusk settles in around Middle Park. The next sighting to the west is Tabernash. At 9,830 feet, it is the longest on the Moffat Tunnel subdivision and the bottom of the heavy grade to the tunnel. The coal train with the SP units heads east in the evening sun as the engineer gives us an enthusiastic wave.
The UP 6352 East slows as it approaches the east switch. Heavy trains are often held at Tabernash if they don't have a clear shot through the Moffat Tunnel. This way, they don't have to stop on the 2% grade to wait for opposing traffic. The Moffat Tunnel sub-dispatcher has told the crew they will wait for one train before heading up the hill. Post 76 puts us at Granby. The wooden Amtrak depot was built in 1987 to provide rail access to Rocky Mountain National Park, located 16 miles to the north. A green signal announces an empty coal train as it races west on the 60 mile per hour track. Set up near Willows at milepost 79.5, our eastbound coal drag with the Southern Pacific Power heads for Granby. Railroad traverses the Rocky Mountains through a high basin known as Middle Park. Here you will find the headwaters of the Colorado River. Transitioning from August to October, a touch of snow from recent storms highlights the mountains and the countryside is clothed in the golden hue of fall. A Denver to Roper manifest heads through the scene on its way west.
East of Byers Canyon, rock formations rise above the track as UP 7121 East heads through sulfur. We return to the same location after sunset as a glimmer of light announces an approaching westbound. Moving away from the track gives us a better perspective of our surroundings as an eastbound UP business special races beneath the natural rock sculpture. West of Hot Sulphur Springs, the Moffat Tuttle sub follows the Colorado River through Byers Canyon. Here we see Amtrak 5, the westbound California Zephyr coasting along the 20 mile per hour track. The train has a surprise for us. A classic Pullman car, the Hickory Creek, brings up the rear of number five today. This car was built in 1948 and was part of New York Central's famous 20th Century Limited. Owned by a private company and restored to its original livery, the Hickory Creek gives us a taste of yesteryear and the golden age of railroading. The NSF 4865 West leads a Denver to Provo Q train through the canyon near milepost 88.
After exiting Byers Canyon, track speed increases from 20 to 60 as the country again opens up. BNSF 6797 East leads a 50-car Provo to Denver QPV DVJ, which is just departing flat on a clear block. Flat is a location of a 7,050-foot siding. Set up near mile post 92.5, we catch UP 6064 East in charge of a heavy coal train. The late afternoon sun highlights exhaust from all three sets of power as the train approaches. The train is approaching Byers Canyon and a section of 20 mile per hour track that can sometimes sneak up on train crews. A track warning device located one mile west of the canyon sounds an alert for the crew. Eastbound train at mile post 9 knot point 3, approaching 20 mile per hour track. Eastbound train at mile post 9 knot point 3, approaching 20 mile per hour track. Eastbound train at mile post 9 knot point 3, approaching 20 mile per hour track. Eastbound train at mile post 9 knot point 3, approaching 20 mile per hour track. Moving to the west switch of flat at mile post 93.7, 
UP 5922 heads east with another coal train. We featured this same train in the Moffett Road Part 1 at Rollins on the east side of the Moffett Tunnel. Trains enjoy fast running between Byers Canyon and Gore Canyon. A UP business special from Roseville, California to Council Bluffs, Iowa sprints along the nearly level track at 70 miles per hour. Two SD-70 Aces, the UP 8775 and 8715 are on the point of this special train. Dusk has settled in at Troublesome. More classic searchlight signals light up the scene as we await a westbound. The signal's aspect changes from approach to clear as more coal empties slip through the night. Here is the same location in the morning as a BNSF Provo to Denver Q train heads through Troublesome.
Relocating to the west switch, an eastbound UP manifest rolls over a defect detector on its way to Denver. UP detector, milepost 98.9. The signals at the west end of Troublesome show an approach for Amtrak 6, the eastbound California Zephyr, as it works between San Francisco and Chicago. The train just came through Gore Canyon, which is marked by the jagged rocks you see in the distance. We watch and listen as the train passes the defect detector located at milepost 98.9. Moving a couple miles to the west, we catch UP 5658, leading a Denver to Salt Lake City manifest through the beautiful countryside just east of Kremlin. The rear GE C6044AC number 7317 puts on a smoke show as the engineer comes out on the throttle just a mile from Kremlin. Kremlin is the location of a 5,990 foot siding and is the base for maintenance of way. On a rainy August afternoon, UP 7149 East rolls through Kremlin with more coal loads from western Colorado.
Near the west end of Kremlin, we can see a maintenance of way shop as a westbound BNSF slowly approaches. This is a crew change point for BNSF trains heading west out of Denver. The new crew will take this train to Grand Junction. The Moffat Tunnel sub-dispatcher has told the BNSF to proceed to the west end of Kremlin and wait for a favorable signal. Workers have been inspecting the slide fence in Gore Canyon and have been told to get into the clear so this train can pass. Soon the BNSF gets a signal and departs Kremlin. The train leaves Middle Park behind as it prepares to enter Gore Canyon, which doesn't look like much from our current location. The steep walls of Gore Canyon rise 1,000 feet above the Colorado River, making it and the railroad the only passages through the three-mile-long canyon. The rapids here are the wildest in the state of Colorado and are only for expert rafters and kayakers. From Inspiration Point, High up on the south side of the canyon, we watch as UP-6560 heads east with more coal loads. The train is working up a gentle grade of less than 1% as it passes through the siding of Asia, just west of the canyon.
The sheer walls of Gore Canyon are not for the timid. However, we found some hardy souls that feel right at home here. Bighorn sheep thrive in Gore Canyon, finding safety in the near vertical cliffs. The sure-footed animals are amazing to watch as they gracefully ascend rock walls that would be next to impossible for us. This youngster makes the climb look easy. Well, almost. Because of their natural rock climbing gear, we are sure the bighorn sheep have the best train watching spots in Gore Canyon all to themselves. We return to Inspiration Point in October to find much of the canyon still in the shadows as a westbound BNSF heads toward Asia. Moving down to track level, we catch Amtrak 5 as it rolls through Asia and toward Little Gore Canyon. The Moffat Road is one of the scenic highlights for the California Zephyr, and as you will see, the farther west we go, the better the scenery gets. The train approaches Tunnel 39 as it enters Little Gore Canyon. It will be meeting the eastbound Amtrak 6 at Yarmini, around 10 miles to the west. From the south rim of Little Gore Canyon, we look down to see UP 7230 East leading a coal train between the sightings of Radium and Azure. The thunder of 4,400 horsepower diesel prime movers echoes through the canyon.
Where the water in Gore Canyon is known to be wild, it is just the opposite here. Little Gore Canyon is recommended for anyone who wants a leisurely boat trip down the Colorado. Today, some fishermen are trying their luck. We have moved closer to the west end of the canyon and are in time to catch Amtrak 6, which is right now rolling through radium. and will be at our location in a few minutes. Soon, the train exits Tunnel 42 at milepost 115.8. A pair of UP business cars bring up the rear. As the wind blows through the surrounding trees, we watch as the train winds along the Colorado River in the canyon below. A group of rafters enjoy the calm waters below Tunnel 42 as they drift downriver to Radium. Little Gore Canyon is ideal for families who want to take a leisurely trip through this amazing country. Train enthusiasts can also enjoy a river trip through here as trains roll right along the Colorado's north bank. UP 6796 East leads a loaded coal train through Radium and into Tunnel 42.
Continuing west, the railroad follows a bend in the river at Rancho del Rio, just east of the siding at Yarmini. More eastbound coal loads head to Denver. Yarmini is a 7,760-foot siding. BNSF 6797 East leads train QPVDVJ, a Provo, Utah, to Denver Manifest on a rainy summer afternoon. Despite the rainy weather, some hardy fishermen drift downstream hoping for a bite as the Colorado and the railroad continue their westward journey side by side at Yarmini. A rumble is soon heard from the east announcing the arrival of a light power move led by UP 5980. A total of 15 engines are on their way to Grand Junction. Some will be dropped off at Glenwood Springs to be used as swing helpers on heavy coal trains heading east over the Moffat. This train is symboled the ENYGJC.
Relocating three miles to the west, we arrive at Bond, where the Moffat Road joins the Dotsero Cutoff. Completed by the Rio Grande in June of 1934, this 38-mile line connected the Moffat with Rio Grande's route to Salt Lake City. BNSF 7033 West meets a loaded coal train, which is waiting for a favorable signal to continue east. The BNSF Denver to Provo train will head through Bond and over the Dotsero Cutoff on its way to Grand Junction, over 144 miles to the west. The 7033 is a new GE ES 44C4. This unit has only two traction motors per truck and uses a high-tech variable traction control system. The telltale difference in the C4 are the air cylinders and linkage on the side frames of the trucks. So far, BNSF is the only railroad with a roster of C4s. The engineer of the BNSF 7033 sounds a warning with bells and whistles for UP signal maintainers working near the junction. This is where westbound trains leave the Moffat Tunnel subdivision and enter the Glenwood Springs sub. The track heading off to the right is the original Moffat route, referred to today as the Craig Branch. A pair of remote-controlled EMD SD70 Max bring up the rear of the train. The BNSF continues through the junction at milepost 128.8. This eastern end of the Dotsero cutoff was originally called Orstad, which is the name Dotsero spelled backwards. Bond got its name from the bonding of the Rio Grande with the Moffat Road. That is not to say the two railroads got along. They were actually bitter rivals, connected as a result of numerous court battles. An eastbound BNSF QPVDVJ approaches the junction known today as Center Bond.
Before continuing west along the Dotsero cutoff, let's take a look at the lower end of the Craig Branch. The original Moffat route departs Bond with a stiff 1.9% grade to the north. This was the original route built by David Moffat to connect Denver with Salt Lake City, but it went nowhere until the Dotsero cutoff was built after his death. This line ended in the coal fields to the north, but is still used by UP today. From the old line, we see a westbound UP coal train stopping for a crew change at Bond. A new crew will soon take this train west to Grand Junction. As the westbound comes to a stop, we hear the sound of a loaded coal train coming off the Craig Branch. UP 6860 drops down grade with loads of black diamonds. Six units power this train in a two-by-two-by-two two two configuration. As the train continues through Bond, we head up the hill to Crater, where the line makes a series of loops to maintain a grade of no more than 2%. UP 6440 West leads an empty coal train up the grade at what is known as Crater Loops.
the train approaches a rural grade crossing located at the east end of the 5160-foot siding known as Crater. Between Bond and Phippsburg, the Moffat Tunnel subdivision is controlled by UP Dispatcher 380. A meet had been planned here at Crater, but the dispatcher had a last-minute change of mind and will send the UP 6440 on up the line to Volcano. We again see the UP 6860 East as it heads down the 2% grade at Crater. The train rolls along alfalfa fields and rural ranch land as it wraps around the crater loops. We return to Bond as an eastbound coal train slows for a crew change in the late afternoon.
This is an away terminal for UP crews from both Denver and Grand Junction. A trio of GEs lead a westbound BNSF out of West Bond on its way to Provo, Utah. The Red Rocks make a nice backdrop for the train and are a taste of things to come. In 1861, Congress chose the name Colorado for the territory. The name is of Spanish origin and means red-colored. Passengers aboard Amtrak's California Zephyr traveling through the Centennial State will agree the name definitely fits. We see number five passing beneath Redstone Cliffs near milepost 134. On our October visit, we return to the same location between Bond and Dell. It's just after sunset, and the light is fading fast. As a westbound Denver to Salt Lake City manifest approaches, we note that the new LED signals are now operational, and the old Rio Grande signals have been removed.
trains continue to follow the course of the Colorado River through numerous canyons. East of Burns, BNSF 9291 West leads an empty coal train out of a cut and past the approach signals for Dell, the next siding to the west of Bond. From the south rim of the canyon, we get a bird's eye view of the train, led by two EMD SD-70 Aces, number 9291 and brand new 9069. Although it is running empty, remote locomotives have been placed in the middle and rear of the train. This train was made up in Alliance, Nebraska and is bound for a mine in Utah where it will be loaded and sent back east. We will see this train again on its return trip later on in the program. The BNSF disappears around a bend in the canyon floor at Burns. Moving to track level, the canyon walls are dressed in vivid fall colors above a bridge over the Colorado at milepost 145.75. Even brush along the river's bank puts on a bright autumn display while the cool water flows by on its 1,450-mile journey to the Gulf of California. The quiet scene is momentarily interrupted as Amtrak 6, the eastbound California Zephyr, crosses the bridge at Burns. The brightly colored sandstone walls that rise above the Colorado River are a prominent feature, making the Moffat Road a very scenic route through the Rockies. The color of the rock seems to constantly change with the time of day and weather. A red tower rises over the tracks where the railroad crosses the river again near milepost 150 between Dell and Range. UP 7320 leads westbound coal empties through the scene.
In October, we were greeted with warm, pleasant days with plenty of sunshine. On one such afternoon, we set up along the north bank of the Colorado near milepost 150.5. Taking in the surrounding countryside keeps one from boredom while waiting for the next train. Speaking of which, AMTK 162 leads today's Amtrak 5 around a curve on its westbound journey between Chicago and San Francisco. On the rear of the train are former Southern Pacific business cars Stanford and Sunset, now painted in UP's armor yellow. The engineer gives us a friendly whistle as a train approaches. Moving a quarter mile down the tracks, the red cliffs really stand out against the blue sky as UP 5593 West takes the same route as Amtrak, with more empty coal hoppers headed for the mines in western Colorado. SP-374, now patched UP-6419, takes care of the rear-end DPU duties as the train continues west. The section of track between Dell and Range is some of the most scenic on the Dots Arrow cutoff. We are certain that surveyors charged with connecting the Rio Grande's Tennessee Pass line with the Moffett route also considered attraction of the natural surroundings here just as beneficial to the railroad as the easy water level grade. According to Union Pacific's Glenwood Springs subdivision timetable, this is simply milepost 151 with a 0.5% downhill grade for westbound trains. Timetables and track profiles don't mention what one sees while traveling over this section of track. As far as the crew of the approaching UP 6842 are concerned, this is just another day at the office.
repositioned our camera on a ridge above the siding at Range, near milepost 166.3. Range is the last siding trains encounter before reaching Dot Zero. The siding is 7,720 feet in length and located along a stretch of tangent track, something you don't see often on the Moffat Road. UP 7320 is seen again as it passes below us, leaving the red rocked canyons behind. The train continues west along the 45 mile per hour track as it heads for Dot Zero. Another loaded coal train led by UP 6679 heads for Bond as dusk settles in amongst the canyons. The rumble and whine of GE AC 4400s reverberates through the air. We have arrived at Dot Cerro, where the Moffat Road joins Rio Grande's Tennessee Pass line between Pueblo and Grand Junction. When the new connector track was graded, this was milepost zero, hence the name Dot Cerro. 
The tracks meet where the Eagle River joins the Colorado and continues west through Glenwood Canyon. To the east lies the fabled Tennessee Pass subdivision, which was a magnet for rail fans from all over the world. Trains crested the summit of Tennessee Pass at an elevation of 10,202 feet and dealt with a ruling grade of over 3%. The Union Pacific closed Tennessee Pass in 1997, but has never removed the rails, leaving many to speculate the future of the line. Who knows? Maybe someday we can again see hard-working locomotives exiting the Tennessee Pass Tunnel. In the meantime, there is plenty of action at Dotsero as UP 7217 East leads a heavy coal train through the junction for an evening run over the Moffat. West of Dotsero, trains enter Glenwood Canyon. SP-335 East takes a water train out of the canyon. The 335 is one of only a few unpatched Southern Pacific locomotives left on the UP roster, and we are fortunate to catch it here on the point of this train. Glenwood Canyon is yet another incredibly scenic portion of the railroad. At over 12 and a half miles in length, its rugged walls climb as high as 1,300 feet over the Colorado River. A family of deer walk along the tracks just east of Shoshone Tunnel 1, the location of a 14,250-foot siding called Allen. From Dotsero West, the older Denver and Rio Grande Western mile markers are utilized. We are near milepost 349 on the Glenwood Springs sub. The deer have plenty of time to get to safety before UP 6770 heads east through Allen.
Amtrak 6 rolls through Glenwood Canyon near milepost 350. The train disappears into the 276-foot bore of Tunnel 1, which separates the sightings of Allen and Shoshone. Amtrak's 5 and 6 met today near Dotsero, and soon we see the westbound number 5 exiting the tunnel. The majesty of Glenwood Canyon inspired the creation of the Vista Dome car in 1944. The dome design enabled passengers a much better view than a conventional car and was used by numerous passenger trains during the golden age of railroading. From a park near Hanging Lake, we get a spectacular view of the canyon above the siding of Shoshone. This point is seven miles east of Glenwood Springs and is a popular destination for travelers who want to take in the grandeur of the canyon. Shoshone Tunnel 2 is located at the west end of the short 3,960-foot siding. BNSF 9291 East exits the tunnel. If this train looks familiar, it should. We first saw it near Dell, heading west to a coal mine near Helper, Utah. It is now loaded and making its return trip east. We have arrived at historic Glenwood Springs, which began life as a western frontier town called Defiance. The city has seen famous visitors, including President Teddy Roosevelt and the legendary Doc Holliday, who is buried here. 
Glenwood Springs is a station stop for the California Zephyr. The depot was built by the Rio Grande in 1904 and today contains a railroad museum operated by the Western Colorado chapter of the National Railway Historical Society. Amtrak 5 arrives at Glenwood Station on its westward journey through Colorado. UP-7217 slowly approaches the depot with a loaded coal train on the westbound track. It will be stopping to add remote swing helpers before continuing over the Moffat. People board the train, which will be continuing its westward journey momentarily. The engineer gives a warning whistle that the train will soon depart. We again see the private cars Pacific Sunset, Stanford and Sunset as they bring up the rear of today's number five. With Amtrak out of the way, UP 7217 continues to wait while another westbound exits Glenwood Canyon. With the mid-train helpers cut in and the westbounds out of the way, the UP 7217 East finally has a clear shot out of Glenwood Springs. People gather on a footbridge to watch as the big engines begin to pull.
sand is applied to the rails and the ground shakes as the engines work to get the 14,000 ton train up to track speed. Blue smoke rises in the distance, telling us the newly added swing helpers are working hard and soon will be approaching as a train heads out of town. The train picks up speed as it enters Glenwood Canyon in the late afternoon. The sun will long have set by the time it approaches the Continental Divide. Green signals will guide its way as it passes through the night, high up in the Colorado Rockies, on the legendary Moffat Road. Thanks for watching.